Really? Black people are racist, or the most racist people than any other race on this planet. Was it not racist when Bryce Williams shot dead Alison Parker live on air in order to create what he called a race war? Was it not racist when a gang of black radicals called for lynching whites and killing cops just days before deputy Darren Goforth was gunned down in cold blood? Was it not racist when the major institution of media refused to identify the suspect as black? Was it not racist when a black couple beat this white woman while yelling, wrong hood, bitch. Bitch, wrong hood, bitch. Wrong hood, bitch. Wrong hood, bitch. Is it not racist for the major institution, which is MTV, to endlessly make TV shows and YouTube videos lecturing white people about how racist they are? Seriously, this channel is called MTV News. Music Television News. Yet over half of the previous 24 videos have been about racism. Plus, it's completely inaccurate to claim that only major institutions wield power in today's society. Twitter outrage mobs wield huge power. We see them getting people fired and destroying people's lives all the time. And almost every time that happens, it's white people being publicly shamed for saying something politically incorrect. Good people can unintentionally say and do racist things. But not if you're killing white people to try and start a race war. No, that's not racist at all, is it? Or just wind up supporting racist institutions and practices without even realizing. All right, that's oh, enough. you mean like Black Lives Matter? Right? Full reports up on Infowars.com. We have to stop doing what the politically correct people tell us. They're nobodies on power trips that want to get society at each other's throats so they can play the part of the savior and the referees. So they need to be rebuked. Okay, they are the racist, they are the fraud, they are the joke, they know what they're doing. It's time to treat them with disdain, not to coddle or grovel to them. That's the answer. Hi, I'm Bonnie Hari from foodbabe.com. As you may know, I'm known for getting the yoga mat chemical azodicarbonamide out of Subway's famous bread last year. Over 100,000 of you signed this petition, and without you, Subway would have never made this change. I thank you so much for making that happen. But I'm not here today to talk about yoga mats or shoe rubber. There's an even bigger issue that we need to address at Subway. I have been working with several experts and consumer advocacy groups for the past year on this very important issue, and we are now ready to take action, and we need your help. Subway is serving us meat that is raised with antibiotics, and this is irresponsible. That's because antibiotics are being routinely fed to farm animals not to treat diseases, but to fatten them up and make them grow bigger on less food. Almost all of the antibiotics in the U.S., about 80% of them, are fed to farm animals. This overuse of growth promoting antibiotics is creating superbugs that could threaten the entire human population. When animals are constantly fed low levels of antibiotics, they become a breeding ground for antibiotic resistant bacteria and it's spreading to humans. We now have bacterial infections that only a few years ago could be cured and are now not responsive to any known antibiotics. Thousands of people are dying and experts believe it's going to get worse. Some major food companies have taken action by committing to stop this practice. Meanwhile, Subway headquarters is silent on the issue. This April, we sent a letter to the CEO of Subway, Fred DeLuca, asking him to engage with us to discuss opportunities for them to step up as leaders and to commit to eliminating these antibiotics from their chicken suppliers and eventually to eliminate these antibiotics across all supply chains, including their turkey, beef, and pork. Subway has a responsibility to make this happen. Join us and sign the petition at foodbabe.com slash subwaymeat. I know together we can make this happen. Now, Food Babe is only one of hundreds of prominent activists in North America, but she's probably had more than, I don't know, 20 or so successes with initiatives, uh, getting chemicals out of the beer, uh, you name it, because this audience and other audiences take action, contact these different industries, and then once a big operation like McDonald's or Subway does the right thing, then basically everybody else follows suit. And if you look at the social engineering of the globalist and of the big petrochemical manufacturers, they're putting their toxic waste as additives in the food. 
It's not just fluoride in the water. And again, they're cutting the fluoride in the water by half. They've banned it as a pesticide. They've gone from laughing at us 10 years ago to having to take action. Bisphenol A is being removed out of more and more plastics. This is a microcosm of every other political and socioeconomic and cultural phenomenon when we take action. But it comes from the grassroots. You don't see the establishment right wing or left wing coming up with really effective grassroots campaigns. They're like, oh, tax carbon that plants breathe, but ignore genetic engineering and all the rest of serious stuff that really is damaging our environment and our way of life. We're part of the planet. What affects the planet affects us. And so people are always saying to me on the street, yeah, uh, you know, you're against uh, forced vaccines, you expose GMO, uh, you're against you know, fluoridation, all these things, but then you're not for carbon taxes and you're not for, well, because it's a scam. China, if we shut down our power plants, has dirty plants and more of it goes into the air. I want clean plants. We have them. They're shutting them down. They show you water vapor in, you know, in the winter, hot water vapor coming out of a smokestack and go, look at the smoke. There is nothing there but water and carbon dioxide. Now, they know they can't get you to list that as a pollutant, so they list carbon dioxide. The point is, is that the elite don't care about the planet. They sell their whole agenda they do, but that's not what they're doing. I want my great-great-grandkids to have a planet. I want yours to have a planet. I'm concerned about all this genuinely, and what makes me upset is all these George Soros-funded groups could care less. Now, VaniHariFoodBabe.com forward slash Subway Meat this is such a big deal because you can feed turkeys, chickens, cows, pigs, you know, whatever species you're, you're farming in really unsanitary, really horrible environments. And if you give them steroids and if you give them hormones and you give them other chemicals and you give them these, these toxic antibiotics, they will get fat, they will get bloated, even in you know, piles of, of excrement and bugs all over. The problem is... That's unethical and torturing an animal. But then you're eating that and it's being passed on. And that's what's linked to obesity, health problems, the rise of superbugs. She just talked about that. And then every time she comes on, particularly this show, and launches an initiative, they have articles attacking her, saying she's not a scientist. She's not a. She is holding up studies and news articles and admissions. She's just articulate, attractive, smart knows how to engage in public relations, and is a focal point of somebody that cares. And so they want to change the subject from what she's saying to, oh, look, it's just some pretty woman. Notice how, again, in the political correct world, if she was pushing something the system wanted, that would be decried. But because she's pushing something they don't want, they engage in sexist-type activities towards her. Uh, I mean, I don't care what color you are, if you're a woman or a man, if you're fighting for liberty and fighting so that I don't have to go through a minefield to find meat to where my kids won't, you know, be sick all the time. And again, there's been massive pressure the last 15 years on synthetic bovine growth hormone in the milk that's made kids have all sorts of weird growth disorders. That's caused all sorts of premature uh, puberty, uh, all sorts of problems. If you want it to go get a prescription, take growth hormone, that's your issue. There are some health risks, obviously. But should we put our children on it? And because of activists, I remember 15 years ago, 16 years ago, when they were suing Fox News out of Florida for running a report about it, when they would come after you if you criticized Roundup and, and, and do a slap suit. Notice we've come so far now, that's not really happening. Because we're on the march, we're winning. Now, that's my intro uh, to that, Vani Hari. Uh, talk about your new initiative, but why don't you talk about some of the successes you've had, others have had. I mean, it looks like an avalanche of success. McDonald's is getting ready to basically go out of business, a lot of analysts think. Uh, Tyson instantly backs off and says, we'll stop buying tortured chickens. Uh, I mean, it's gone from belligerence to like they're basically capitulating in many fronts while still using PR firms to come after you, myself, and others. Yeah, there is an absolute avalanche of change happening. Thank you so much, first of all, for having me on here, Alex. I really appreciate it. It's been a little while. I went off the book tour and I needed to take a little break, but I'm back at it. And um, 
And I'm back at it with this campaign because really what's really important here, everything I've learned about the food industry, every single thing, it all goes down to Monsanto, the GMOs, the corn and the soy that we're feeding all of these animals. And when we feed our animals things that aren't healthy, they got to keep them healthy and really inhumane environments. And that's what's happening with the antibiotic issue. Um, you know, animals are given antibiotics for disease prevention. That means that perfectly healthy animals, before they even get sick, get a low dose of antibiotics to just keep them in these really horrible environments, eating food that they weren't meant to eat and, um, and being, you know, basically tortured in a way. Then you've also got um, the fact that these antibiotics they've found increase the meat on these animals. It actually helps them grow faster, which actually produces more meat for the industry. And so these two practices, experts believe, and it's not only me who's saying this, I'm working with several different groups that are pressuring Subway right now. Everyone from the NRDC to Friends of the Earth, Consumers Union, U.S. PERG, um, FACT, I mean, I have them all listed here, Center of Food Safety. Sure, you, know, you always these... act in coalitions, and then the mainstream media acts like you're just out here on your own making this up. Yeah, yeah, they do do that. And it's, it's, it's not even the mainstream media. It's the people that the food industry and the chemical industry have paid to be experts in this space. The same type of that... folks that say that they can drink Roundup, but then when they're asked to on camera, won't do it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And that's, a, you know, there's a really great example of that happening very recently where a professor was quoted in The Atlantic, New York Times, NPR, and all articles critical about my work, who is actually paid by Monsanto, even though he told reporters when he was being interviewed that he has no ties to Monsanto. So, you know, thankfully, because of FOIA requests and other things, this information's coming out about how these so-called experts are tied to industry. But what's really interesting is this issue really affects all of us, whether we are vegan, vegetarian, whether we eat at Subway or not, the overuse of antibiotics can affect us because we can be subjected to these superbugs or antibiotic resistant bacteria in our water, in our soil, on other food that you eat. So it's everywhere because the overuse of antibiotics. It's breeding superbugs. Yes, absolutely. Over 80% of the uh, uh, antibiotics used in this country is used on animals, they say. And Subway is one of the largest uh, corporations in the world. They, they own, I think, close to $6 billion worth of purchasing power from the meat industry. And when I launched this campaign last Monday on the heels of many other campaigns that were also launched, um, not only did we get over 30,000 signatures in just a few days, but Subway was forced to respond by the end of week. So late Friday night, they came out with a small concession saying that they're going to try to remove antibiotics from their chickens by 2016, but won't talk about to us or reporters or anybody about any other further details when it comes to the turkey, the beef, the ham, et cetera, and that they sell. And so what we're really looking to do now with this, this campaign is not only get more people to sign these petitions, the, the, you know, if you can head over to foodbabe.com slash Subway Meat and lend your voice, I really appreciate it. But even more so, go to Subway's Facebook page, tweet at them, ask them for more details. We deserve a formal commitment. Absolutely. To we need to be concerned about our food and the garbage that's in it. This is about a global awakening. Since we mentioned it, it's so unbelievable. New listeners may not have actually seen or heard this to think I'm making it up. Here's Patrick Moore, a big chemical lobbyist connected to Monsanto, who'd gone around for years saying he would drink a glass of Roundup or glyphosate and that it was safe enough to drink. And when the reporter, I guess with CBC, asked him to do it, he won't do it. And then I have CBS News saying mercury is good for your children. That's what the industry says. So take your vaccines. Well, I'm no rocket scientist, but glyphosate is connected to cancer, very poisonous. That's been known forever. They suppressed that in the studies back in the 80s. And mercury is one of the most deadly heavy metals in the body. But here is that famous clip from, I guess, about two years ago uh, where he was confronted and said, all right, here's a glass of uh, Roundup, bud. Go ahead and drink it. Here it is. I do not believe that glyphosate in Argentina is causing increases in cancer. You can drink a whole quart of it and it won't hurt you. It's, yeah, uh, it, you want to drink some? We have some here. I'd be happy to, actually. But you, not, not really, but... 
Not really. I know it wouldn't hurt I mean, me. If, if, if you say so, I have some glasses. No, no, I'm not stupid. 